Hello and welcome back. In this video I want to talk about uh, biological cells and battery cells and compare them for you. Now please bear with me in this because I'm leading up to something uh, very important. I'll keep it short and concise for those people with uh, short attention spans. Okay, uh, now biological cells, they produce electricity of course and the primary molecule involved is ATP. You've all heard of that I'm sure and battery cells of course they produce electricity too now biological cells they consume food usually sugar in organic reactions and battery cells they consume electrolytes in inorganic reactions now this this one right here is the main difference between the bio cell which is on this biological side and the regular battery cell okay now biological cells they also require oxygen Battery cells, they may require oxygen, but they may not. And the magnesium air battery is an example of a battery that does require oxygen. Now, biological cells, they all maintain a pH balance, and they have acids and alkalines to, to do that with. Now, a regular battery cell, it also maintains a pH balance, unknown to most people, which and it's, it's visible at the plates if you measure them and they're usually acid or an alkaline type. Now biological cells, they all have hydrophobic and hydrophilic surfaces. Battery cells, they may have hydrophilic and hydrophobic surfaces, but they usually do not because they're dealing with metals. Okay, biological cells all contain water. Battery cells usually contain water, but they may not. I'll be back with more shortly. Okay, uh, here's a picture of uh, three cell types. And uh, they're the liposome, the micelle, and the bilayer sheet. Now the liposome is the most ad advanced form of it, and most of the cells in your body are liposome types. And the liposome contain contains the micelle, you can see it in the, in the center of the cell which contains uh, that's the nucleus of the cell the brown area would be the, the uh, cytoplasm and around the outside of it you have a bilayer sheet which is not shown there is really a bilayer sheet but that's actually what it is okay now uh, the mycelle is a more primitive type of cell and you can still see it in nature though in, in organisms like the jellyfish for instance and then the bilayer sheet is more like uh, the skin uh, on your body or a uh, leaf on a plant. Okay, now, believe it or not, these cells all self-assemble. And there's a lot of research being done on, you know, how cells uh, grow and things like that. But th the truth is, these things self-assemble all by themselves and they have to, the body just provides a uh, environment that they can do that in and if you need proof that they self-assemble then there's plenty of videos out, out about how to make liposomes and mycelia with a blender and some lecithin and, and water so, uh, but they do uh, these things self-assemble on their own simply because of the hydrophobic and hydrophilic surfaces involved Okay, now for battery research, and in a discussion of the of biological batteries like the biocell, we're mainly concerned with that bilayer sheet on the bottom right there, as I will show you. Be back shortly again. Okay, in this slide, what you see is a a picture of the Wikipedia article on lecithin. Now, lecithin is the key to the cellular self-assembly mechanism. It's, and that's because it's both hydrophilic and lipophilic, meaning that one side of the molecule is going to attract water, and the other side of the molecule, molecule is going to attract lipids like fats and oils. And now, lecithin is a, it's commonly available, and it's extracted from the cell walls of uh, mostly soybean, sunflower, and eggs. And... Uh, if you take lecithin as a dietary supplement, which you should because it will help rebuild the tissues in your body and build new cells, 
uh, I would stay away from the soybean lecithin because it's highly uh, genetically modified. I personally take the sunflower lecithin. And in the last uh, slide, I forgot to mention that the reason animals uh, have to give birth is because the female's body is necessary to provide the environment and the nutrients for the embryo to self-assemble. And once the embryo is ready to live on its own, then, then the female uh, will give birth. Now, on the right side of the slide, you'll see the molecular structure of uh, phosphatidylcholine or phosphatidylcholine. And uh, that's important for our battery discussion uh, for two reasons. One, because it contains choline, and two, because it contains phosphate ions. Now, the choline is important because uh, one of the most powerful uh, electrolytes you can use in a battery is a eutetic, eutetic solution of uh, urea and uh, choline chloride. And it's also interesting that urea is a byproduct of uh, metabolic uh, uh, processes. But uh, eutetics is a new science, uh, new branch of science, and there's not a whole lot uh, known about it, but it's growing really fast. Now the phosphates, on the other hand, are really interesting because the phosphate ion can take uh, several forms. And I'm going to talk about that next. I'll be back. In this slide, uh, you see the, uh, a picture of the Wikipedia article on uh, oxidative phosphorylation. And uh, this is important in your body because it produces ATP or adenosine triphosphate. And uh, this is another key for uh, making a, a good biological battery. And we'll take a look at the phosphate ions next. But on a side note, the, uh, on the right side of the slide, you see the Krebs uh, illustration of the Krebs cycle, or the citric acid cycle. And science has a bad habit of uh, giving multiple names to the same process, which just makes it confusing. But uh, the point is that uh, the citric acid would probably make an excellent uh, electrolyte for a biological battery. In this slide, you see the Wikipedia article about uh, phosphoric acid, which is a very interesting acid. I'll just read the uh, highlighted, highlighted part of it. Uh, orthophosphoric acid is a non-toxic acid, which when pure is a solid at room temperature and pressure. The conjugate base of phosphoric acid is dihydrogen phosphate, and which in turn has a conjugate base of hydrogen phosphate which has a conjugate base of phosphate and phosphates are essential for all life. Now what's really interesting about these ionic forms is that they each have a uh, pH uh, that they prefer and the total pH range of all those ions is really wide. So and this is why I'm going to use uh, phosphoric acid as uh, the electrolyte in the biocell. Uh, another reason that uh, I want to use phosphoric acid is because it's a weak acid and uh, biological cells can't handle strong acids like uh, sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid. The, the carbon and uh, the titanium dioxide, even metals, will break down under those conditions. Now let's talk about the biocell materials. Um, for my positive electrode, I'm using graphite, which is a form of carbon, and you can use any carbon, but it's better to use a, a conductive carbon like graphite or graphene. And the negative, for the negative electrode, I'm using titanium dioxide and lime, which is calcium carbonate. It's the same thing as your bones are made out of, basically. Now, uh, in your bones, it takes calcium phosphate to make your bones, so I obviously have to try uh, sometime making uh, using calcium phosphate instead of the lime here. And now I'm also using oil on the positive electrode to make it hydrophobic and I'm using I've already proved that that uh, gives you a, an increase in voltage. I've also shown that uh, copper oxide on the positive electrode also produces an increase in voltage and uh, this is also an indicator that the cell is aerobic and needs uh, plenty of oxygen. 
So now I've shown in this video that lecithin should be in the biocell and it ought to be on the separator paper so that because uh, uh, it's, it's hydrophilic and uh, lipophilic so on the separator paper it will track the oil side of the one of the paper of the positive electrode and it'll tra track the hydrophilic uh, n uh, negative uh, electrode side now I've also shown that phosphoric acid is uh, would be a, a great electrolyte for the battery okay now so now you know why I call this battery the biocell because it's as close to a living battery as you can get and tomorrow on the new moon which is important symbolically for starting new phases of projects I'm going to combine all these factors and produce the most advanced biocell I've ever created so you don't want to miss that video if you're following my work so thank you for watching and I will see you next time